What's going on guys? Today I want to take a look at Deceit in the brand new Corrupted Deceit. Which is better and are there any tricks to these weapons that you aren't aware of? Well, let's take a look at how both of them work and then decide once and for all what is the best DPS weapon in Remnant 2. Let's start off by taking a look at the original Deceit. This is a very elegant weapon you can craft after defeating the Fei Lin boss over in Lawsom. You can think of this as a sniper as it feels like one but actually behaves like a fusion rifle. All rings and mutators that boost the fire rate of fusion rifles and bows work well on this guy. Archer's Crest and Supercharger being the main two you're going to be using. And without those, the gun fires too slowly to be usable, so before anything, throw them on. Of course, you have some leeway with the mutator, but honestly, firing faster just feels better to me. This rifle charges up two shots and fires both per one bullet. So your six total shots actually equates to 12. This grants it some decent stagger and very high damage per pull of the trigger. Problem is, this gun on its own will never be able to hit weak spots. It has that completely disabled, so at best you're gonna up your crit damage and get those yellow numbers as often as possible. But then why on earth does this weapon have a plus 90% weak spot bonus? Well, this weapon's actually completely designed around its mod called Ouroboros. The mod summons three swords that circle you. If you walk into enemies with the swords, they'll be inflicted with tainted blood. Once enemies are inflicted with this, Deceit's main shots will now hit weak spots no matter where you shoot them. Obviously, this is a huge advantage since weak spot crit can get incredibly high numbers and is guaranteed after you use the mod. Now you can also throw the swords by using your melee. Swing your sword and you'll send out one at a time. And at first this is going to seem like the best strategy as you get three instances of weak spot in a row. And since the tainted blood doesn't last all that long you keep applying it over and over. However, the trick is to actually charge your melee and throw all three swords at once. If you do this and wear a specific ring, that being the Feyrin's sigil, you will not only have guaranteed weak spot for all six shots of the magazine, but the mod will completely regen once you fire a full clip. And activating the mod reloads the bullets in the gun. This allows you to fire six weak spot shots, use the mod, and repeat over and over without ever reloading. And the insanely high damage defeats bosses in sometimes only four clips. The power of deceit comes from the fact that you can create weak spots at will. And in this game, the devs love to hide where enemy weak spots are, or at least make it somewhat difficult to hit them. So while other guns actually deal more damage than deceit, this gun you can't miss with and are never at a disadvantage. The gun has a perfect DPS setup where you fire quickly, gain back all your mod energy, and then hit for thousands of damage at a time. Now let's take a look at the Corrupted Deceit and see if it improved on this perfect design. Long story short, no, this Corrupted Deceit is pretty much worse in every way to the original. At the time of making this video, there is a bug that causes Corrupted Deceit's mod to, well, not work at all. It has a collision issue where if it hits a solid object, it flies around all over the place, sort of ruining the point of the mod. Even when that's fixed though, this weapon will still not be a match for the power of Deceit and here's why. If we just look at the stats alone, the new version has less crit chance and less stagger. It fires a bit faster and holds 12 bullets in the magazine instead of 6. And instead of shooting 2 bullets at once, it shoots 2 bullets in succession. Meaning every time you pull the trigger, one bullet fires and then another following. It still has the two barrels, but the top barrel fires and then the second. So this actually lets you create a different build here because other mutators might work well with this type of fire rate. But the first major issue is that this is the same amount of ammo in the magazine. You're going to be using two bullets every time you fire, whereas Deceit only used one per two shots. So that 12 bullets that looks like more actually turns into six and you eat through ammo twice as quickly as you would on the base version. Then we get to the mod. This one lets you throw out a set of spinning blades that will hit the enemies. Once hit, enemies take only weak spots from Corrupted Deceit, the same way the first one worked. And if you activate the mod again while it's moving, it freezes in place, granting much longer weak spot damage for that enemy. But this actually ruins the entire power we get from Deceit. You see, when the blade is out, you cannot regen your mod energy, meaning you must wait until the blades are done spinning and return to you for you to build up the mod energy again. And all of your power comes from the mod being used before every magazine. Versus Deceit, where you're gonna throw out all three swords at once with the charged heavy, and then you're building back mod energy while you're hitting your high DPS weak spots. It comes down to the original chaining into infinite weak spots, whereas the new corrupted version you only have sections of weak spots and then no weak spot. 
So, even when this weapon has its mod fixed, it will be nowhere near as good as the original. And I tested this, using the Corrupted Deceit twice on Kayula and then using Deceit twice. Deceit beat her two times faster both times, because you have access to infinite mod recharge if used correctly. Now obviously you're going to run into times where you miss the mod or the boss runs away as it hits, but overall this affects both guns anyway. Now I ran this with Challenger Hunter because I don't really like using Hunter Gunslinger, and ultimately it doesn't matter what you do. The original Deceit flows very well in combat, and honestly the hits are more satisfying anyway. Don't feel like you can't use the Corrupted version because it is very similar and still does high damage, and this game's all about using what you like and creating unique builds with it anyway. However, after my own personal testing, the testing of a buddy of mine, and taking a look at both of their stats, the original Deceit is perfect. And when you change perfect, it doesn't get any better. So Deceit is the most reliable and efficient DPS weapon in Remnant 2. Once you get used to its unique playstyle, it'll melt bosses and give you the confidence to take down any monster in your path. Here's the build I used for the test, it's my favorite way to play with Deceit right now. Challenger being insanely fun with a free revive and Rampage highly increasing fire rate. Other than that, the idea is to get high crit and weak spot damage. Oh, and before we go, do be aware that if you melee an enemy using the sword called God Splitter, it will actually activate weak spot hits for Deceit. So some melee into gun gameplay is possible. This sadly is not very efficient since you need to stand next to the enemy, and if you use Deceit correctly, you're already going to have those weak spots 24-7 anyway. But it is possible to mess with a cool type of synergy. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and maybe it helped you understand how both of these weapons work. Neither of them are going to be bad and both are very very strong for damage, but in the end you can't beat the good old original Deceit when it comes to reliability and overall power. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll catch you next time.